12 to 15 foot ceilings. Oh my goodness, and we see some bats already. Guys, we finally got a rental car. We've been trying to get a rental car to explore Long Island for several days now, and finally got one. They've been all booked up. Apparently, uh, cars are hard to come by here on the island. And as nature would have it, it's raining. The day that the rental car is available, it's nasty outside, of course. $80 to ride around in the rain. <laughs> Alas, here we are. So, we're gonna take you on a rainy driving tour to go somewhere cool. Hope you're ready. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go! This is just the beginning. We just pulled up to our first destination of the day. You must be Leonard. All right. What's going on? Just two of us? Two of us in our pup. Okay, man. How you doing, man? Good, man. Good to see you. Good. Yeah. What are you up to today? Finally made it. We finally made it, man. We're not even close to the ending. We just met Leonard, and now we have driven about half a mile up to his family property. Now, Hamilton's Cave has been in his family since the late 1800s when it was founded. This is really cool. We're gonna see, see all there is to see and learn about it. And there's just so much rich history here. This was, uh, used to be home to the Lakayan Indians long, long, long time ago. And we're eager for Leonard to tell us more about it. Before we show you this incredible cave, we want to thank our sponsor for today's video, Waves R Rex. They make an array of great products for your boat, including bilge cleaner, spray wax, and salt inhibitor. Check them out on Amazon or their website, wavesrx.com, and you get 20% off when you use the discount code ADVENTUREWRX. This seems like a perfect rainy day activity. Hey, you know, the daily vlog's got to continue, right? That's right. How cool is this? And this is where the first inhabitants of the islands live. We call the Lucayans. They came from down South America there. And they were from the Arawak tribe. And they settled here around 580. And the moons here from some of the animals that they ate. Our family uh, eventually purchased the caves from the British Crown in 1847. 1847, yeah. and it's just been passed down? Yeah, 27 English pounds. <laughs> now that we've gotten a little bit of history on the caves, we've seen some of the artifacts that have been found from the caves, it's time to go inside. Yeah. The best part, right? The best part is coming up. <laughs> So much room for activities in here. I kind of feel like Ghostbusters right now. Let's see, how do we do this to where I don't look like a ghost? There we go. Guys, this ceiling, how tall do you think the ceiling is? 12 to 15 foot ceilings. Oh my goodness, and we see some bats already. <laughs> So Leonard tells us there's five species of bats in here. Are you ever worried about them biting you? No, they they have so now they pass you right by. Oh, oh look, there it is right there. Oh, he stopped right here. Look, give me the cue. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Here, here, here. Don't, don't. Here. Take the light. Take the light. Don't, don't shine it right on him. Shh. He's hanging upside down. I see him. You got it? Yeah. You ready? I'm gonna put more light on him. He's not gonna like it.
So these lines up at the top of the ceiling here that Leonard has just pointed out is actually the lines or the highway that is built by subterranean termites. And that's the residue that has been left behind them is this dark lines up into the, the caves or the, the, the limestone. Uh, it's really, really neat. And as I'm talking to you, there's bats flying around. Uh, what a cool place this is. So when you were a kid, did you spend any time in here? Man, we played hide and seek all through here. Really? Yeah. Oh, Without man. flashlights? Sometime, yeah. What would you... We didn't have flashlights back then. So what did you do? We had a torch. Lanterns, right? Or? No, no, we didn't have any lanterns. Man. You couldn't take the old people laughing. <laughs> oh, you ever get stuck in here with no lights? Oh, yeah, sometimes. Really? But it, it, we were so used to it, you know, you could find your way back out. Yeah. Leonard is telling us about the bats and there's five different species of bats that call this cave home. And every four years or so, unfortunately it hasn't happened in recent years because of COVID, but typically every four years, the University of Florida, which I know pretty well, has a um, bat team, if you wanna call it, that comes out and tests these bats. They capture the bats with a little net and actually test them to make sure they don't, they're not carrying any diseases or I guess rabies or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, um, white nose. White nose? Yeah, they check them for white nose. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And of course, when I turn the camera on, <laughs> they fly away. <laughs> well, if there's any here, we, these wouldn't fly. This is another species. Oh, look at the cockroaches. Oh, boy. I don't know about these cockroaches. A Mexican free tail, you said? Yeah, they... Most all of these go after the mosquitoes. And okay, maybe insects. I like these guys. Insects. I can't Any, believe, anything that I can't believe mosquito, the cockroaches like. let them... I can't believe they don't eat the cockroaches. No, they don't. These Mexican free tail bats are pretty noisy little creatures, so we're gonna turn off the lights and be really, really quiet, and I hope we can capture their sound. Yeah. Now the noise they're making, what, what are they doing right That's now? Echolocation. They send it send off. They send off their echolocation to to know where they're going. It, yeah, to wait for it to bounce back. Yeah, it's like find my friends, but in bat terms. <laughs> <laughs> they probably communicate. <laughs> we have some, we believe it's some glory from the Lucayans. So if we put the light on an angle like this, uh -huh. you can see, see like limbs coming down with leaves on the side. See? See? see along there, see leaves to the bottom. And what is this? We believe some drawing from the Lucayans. The lines, see? Yeah. Coming down and look like leaves, see? Yeah, okay, I see where it looks like leaves, yeah. yeah I think all along there. How does it make you feel getting to see this history? I, it doesn't faze me a bit, <laughs> you know. No? No, I just enjoy this. A rock here we call the crocodile rock. The crocodile rock? <laughs> Oh, yeah, look at it right oh, there. Oh, wow. That's funny. What kind of bones are we looking at? Mm, well, I think it's a mixture between our ancestors using the caves and the Lucayans, eh? Uh, I could identify a few bones here from the Lucayans. When they were here, these are from the Ebola. These here. Okay. And these are from the Hutia, or, or Guti, they call it. Probably meat bones, sheep or goats or stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. This look like a shoulder from somebody. 
What's really cool is we're looking up at the ceiling and seeing all these indentions really, almost as if you like could take your finger and like push up on it. Well, that actually happened from when the water, when the caves were underwater, the water pressure just eroding away at it. And then as you can see over here, just in front of me, the water pressure just completely pushing right through the caves. It's just so neat to see the, the architecture of it all that nature did this. Pretty stinking cool. So peaceful. This, this species is called the buffy flowerback. The buffy who? Flower. They go after the flower. Buffy nectar. flower. Yeah, they go after the nectar and the flowers. Oh, wow. They move from place to place. Wow. So they migrate over the... And these are sensitive to light? Yes. So this here on the ground are the flowers... The petals, yeah. The petals from the flowers that these bats eat. They are mating now. Mating? That's the species, yeah. They are mating. The buffy flower or these? No, this is the Mexican tree tail. They don't look like they believe in one partner. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. So, so everything you see below me here, I'm trying to keep my light down, uh, is actually the bat guana or the yeah. bat poop. Yeah. And this is, well, it's why this cave was excavated years ago because that's really good fertilizer and it was sold off to farms, uh, specifically farms in the US, is that right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Come get the shot. Hurry, shot. Hurry. I can't look that way. Come, come, come up. Come up. Come up. See up top. Wow. And those, that uh, breed is what? That's the buffy flower. The buffy flower, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, they're gathering. gathering. They'll be soon uh, mating. And they'll be carrying the babies with them. So what's really interesting is Leonard was just telling us about these stalactites. Now, I always remember stalactites because they hang tight to the ceiling. And then of course, from the ground, you have your stalagmites. And then when they, when they join, you have a column. But this one here actually is the first one that we've seen with water on it. It's been really dry here. So they haven't had any water you know, seeping through the, the ground uh, coming into the cave system. The entire cave is dry. So, but this one here has a little bit of water on it. And what creates the stalactite is actually the minerals inside of the water. So as the water filters through the sand and the topsoil and comes down through the ground through the natural process, it leaves behind the minerals. And the minerals are what create this column coming down from the ceiling called a stalactite. It's really, really cool. And Leonard said that it takes 100 years of constant dripping for this to create one inch 
So when you look at these columns, like the one behind me here, you can only imagine how many thousands of years it created, it took to create this entire column. You can see this massive stalactite behind me here as well. Just huge, almost, it's only got about a foot and a half left before it will create a full column. Yeah. Look at this little guy. Mm -hmm. Where? Oh. He just walked till he feels it in his So water drains through these holes, right? Yes, and as you drain it, we evaporate and leave the calcite crystals. So what's so cool is you see these little holes here, and water will actually drain through here, and as it evaporates, it'll leave these calcite crystals, which is basically just what, calcium deposits? Yes. And you can see in the light, if it hits it just right, it sparkles. It's really neat. We did see four species already. I don't think we're going to see the other species if we'd be lucky yeah. to see the other species. So I'm trying to convince Leonard to let us keep on going, but we've met the back of the tunnel here, or back of the cave, I should say, where there is a tunnel. And he's saying that about 75 feet further back in here, it opens up to another cavern, just as big as the one that we were just in. And if you saw that cavern, you'd know that you can play basketball in there pretty easy. It's, you fit a whole basketball gym in there. <laughs> Leonard, don't get stuck in here. <laughs> That you just did that. <laughs> All right, come on in. All right. He just walked. There we go. All right. Did you wear the proper clothes for splunking today? No, I'm in a dress. <laughs> <sighs> totally worth it. Not wearing the dress part, but going that the extra way. It's a long way to carry you out. <laughs> Watch out for E.T. You weren't joking. There's E.T.'s face. Looks kind of like a gecko, too. Yeah, but we took all That's incredible. What is it? That's from the strangler fig. These roots. They are from the strangler fig. Strangler fig. Yeah. And so I imagine those are all growing on top? Yeah, the, the limestone is poor, so they, they'll they find every little crevice. That is so incredible that mm -hmm. that just goes to show the power of nature mm -hmm. pushing through any crack. Go a little further back there and take a look. All right, don't it's tell very, me twice. Very interesting. Oh. I've never done anything like this before. This is so cool.
That's um, so cool. The different formation. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so you can really tell that the water was just coming down here and it would just slowly drip all the way down and, and ride that crest, if you will. And what's creating these really cool calcium fins. For all you musicians out there, check out how cool this is. <laughs> Back here. Got a bass drum back here. <laughs> wow. How cool. We could literally make, like, if I was any storm like any form of musician whatsoever, you could literally make entire cave music. cave music. How cool would that be? Oh, that's so cool. When you think of caves, you probably think of dark and dingy, maybe even stinky. But this experience, I know for me, has like changed my perception of caves. Like this place is so cool and it just feels so completely peaceful to be in here. I'm th so thankful we've had the experience. <laughs> there goes a bat. I'm so thankful we've had this experience to just see nature in its, all its beauty. And we're just gonna take a moment and turn off all the lights and just soak up the experience. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>